What's going on guys? Carl here back with another episode switching back to smartphones finally and we are talking about something which is kind of under the radar. It is the most underrated smartphone of 2018 this year which happens to be in my pocket. So perhaps you can't tell off the front but the moment you look on the back you notice that this guy has three lenses. Most of you may have heard of it, especially if you're in the tech scene. This is the Huawei P20 Pro. I think every single review has done it in this specific color. I went a bit more safe and got the navy one, no judging there. But if you're up for something a bit fancy, something a bit different, this is a very unique color that you could possibly get. And yeah, even though I didn't get that super sweet colorway that everyone may have wanted, I'm actually giving this very device away. You know what to do, just simply sub to the channel, of course. Leave a comment down below and I will pick a random one on one of my next episodes. P.S. Tick watch winner flashed across the screen right now. Congrats. Hit me back with an email. And a lot of you may ask, why is this phone so underrated? Maybe you haven't heard of the brand Huawei before. Maybe this is your first smartphone review video. Or maybe the fact that you just can't grab the P20 or P20 Pro down in the States. Up here in Canada, you can. I know in Europe, in Asia. But this phone might just fly off the radar for some of you, which is super unfortunate just because it's not available in your region. I'm here to inform you and let you know that you might be missing out on a gem. So for mine though, I've been using this now for the past couple months and I've just been drawn back to it. I've been switching through phones on a weekly basis and I just can't get over the fact that this guy has two features. Guesses please. Number one, which is a no brainer of course, is the camera. So let's talk about this first. It has a three lens setup. The one off to the side is a monochrome sensor and Huawei's done this before in the past and it's not like having a monochrome filter. It's different. You have to really get to know it to use it. And once you have, it is such a beautiful lens to have. It's different. I know you can't use it every single time, but for the pics that I've snagged in black and white, it just has this emotion, this feeling to it that a filter just can't justify. Definitely a solid edition, I think I'm still torn between either having this or say an ultra wide for a third lens option, but still great to have on a smartphone. The other two sensors which make up the trifecta are 40 megapixels each and I know that megapixels doesn't always mean the best photos and even though DxO scored this at a 109, which also doesn't mean it's the best, I have found that this takes really awesome photos and it can definitely compete with the king that usually people consider of smartphone photography, which is the Pixel 2. I do find though that the Pixel 2 software does help it out a ton, even though this has an AI chip, it can help you take photos of things like people, pets, food, you kind of name it wherever you point this thing at, it will recognize what you're taking a photo of. But this guy really, really shines in low light. And I truly think this is the best low light camera that you can get. Some of the pics that I've snagged have been unreal. I will obviously let all of these sample shots kind of speak for themselves. Work out if you're interested, listed down below on what I did for chest day. The second thing which I'll talk about, which a lot of people overlook, is the battery life. And Huawei didn't opt to create the thinnest phone. It's actually surprisingly thick for today's standards, but it has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which means it will easily last you the entire day, even with heavy, heavy use. And I've even had this phone last me two days with moderate use, which is unreal for a smartphone. It's just something that you don't see after you've been using a phone for a couple months. You know that the battery tends to get worse as time goes on. This guy easily, easily the entire day, even when I'm crunching through my heaviest, heaviest days. So despite those two really good things, the phone can't be perfect. I know there's always compromises. We will start off with design. The front is the ugly duckling. I get it, they have a notch. I'm not gonna make comments about that. It is the fingerprint sensor that's on the bottom, which is super quick, but I think they were trying to go for an edge to edge display maybe stick it on the back somewhere like most phones, even though I am a huge fan of the back. I think the design looks great. Second off is the software, which I won't go too in depth on EMUI, which is essentially Huawei's skin on top of Android. It isn't the greatest. It just feels like everything is being packed into this. The feature list just kind of goes on and on. And I think some are a bit redundant. I actually just have a stock launcher, Nova launcher installed on mine. It gives it more of a stock Android like feel. I feel like OS is less is usually more in this case. 
But yeah, other than that, I know the chipsets, the silicone inside, they are a bit dated, but this, the P20 Pro, does have six gigs of RAM, so mostly everything that you throw at it, you do get the slight hint of lag, sometimes the small little Android stutter. I haven't seen those as much as, say, when I initially got the phone, and the experience has been getting better for sure. Curious to hear your thoughts down below in the comments, and remember, you could win this very device. Just leave a comment on your favorite sleeper feature of the Huawei P20 Pro down below, and I will hopefully catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes or vlogs. Peace.